You might think that pro riders have it all. The latest kit, bikes and equipment, the best of the very best. But it might not be as good as you think because pro riders can't just go out and ride whatever bikes they like or wear whatever kit they like. They're duty bound to use what is supplied by the sponsors. Well, and if that's not the case, then chances are, you guessed it, it's been banned by the UCI. But you and I can often be seen idolizing these riders, wishing we had the same stuff. But today, I'm gonna look at the kit, the upgrades and the tech, which you can have, but the pro riders can't. Starting with super fast kit. The pros are prohibited from wearing any clothing or skin suits, which feature non-essential elements added to them with an aid of improving aerodynamics. This could be wing areas added underneath the arms, for example, or certain areas added behind the back of the helmet, trying to smooth the airflow across their backs and make them that little bit faster. It can't contain any rigid items or structures that change the shape of the material and the clothing must follow the shape of the cyclist's body. Just a few years ago, we saw this rule updated to state that the surface texture roughness must not be modified in any way so the surface difference is greater than one millimeter. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means that silicon chevron design, which was famously used on many skin suits and jerseys to aid aerodynamics, is banned. However, that's not the case for you and I. We can use that as much as we like. We can wear any kit, any shape, any size, any color. We can mix and match kit and it can be as loud as you like. Although, I can't guarantee that if it's that bad, the fashion police won't be after you. Next up on the list, if you're looking to upgrade to a new bike, the world is your oyster. There's hundreds, if not thousands of different bikes out there for you to choose from. The same can't be said for pro riders though. They're duty bound to use the bikes supplied by their sponsors. And in some cases, the riders can't get on with them, such as Rowan Dennis, who famously fell out with Bahrain Merida over their bikes and equipment. In the women's pro peloton, we saw Hayley Simmons actually leave her team, United Healthcare, in 2016 because she couldn't get on with her time trial bike. No such stress for you or I. If we don't like our bike, we can just change it as and when we like and pick the bike that we like the best. Just like our bike frames and other equipment, the wheels used by the pros must be approved by the UCI. If the fun police say no, well then tough luck, the pros can't use it. There's no such stress for you or I though, because I remember as a kid idolizing and looking at the pro riders using those bladed four spoke wheels, the Spinergy Revex wheels, and just wishing I could get my hands on my own set. However, a couple of years down the line, yeah, you guessed it, the UCI banned them. But it's not just the UCI banning riders from using certain wheels. Teams are gonna be contractually obliged to use the wheels supplied by their sponsors. And if they don't have a wheel sponsor, then chances are they're not gonna use a wheel which conflicts with another sponsor or brand that's associated to the team. And as such, it's very rare that we'll ever see a team using a wheel supplier that's in direct conflict with their group set supplier, such as a team that's using Shimano group sets is never ever gonna be seen using Campagnolo wheels and the same way, the opposite way round. When used as intended, hydration packs can allow us to carry extra water on our bikes, meaning we can stay nice and hydrated, even on those extra long rides. The same can't be said for the pro riders anymore, with the UCI having ruled out such devices as hydration packs. I mean, we could use whatever we like, hydration pack, backpack, you name it, you're free to use it. However, in the past, before this ruling was implemented, we've seen riders try to use hydration packs underneath their skin suit or clothing to try to gain an aerodynamic advantage. Next up on our list, long socks. A more recent one, this, but long socks are destroying the sport of cycling. Well, according to the UCI anyway, so they've decided to ban long socks. However, for you and I, we can use whatever socks we like. Long ones, short ones, woolly ones, thick ones, thin ones, aero ones, even use odd socks if you like. Okay, yeah, there's no UCI ruling about odd socks. The pros could use long socks if they wanted to. Have you ever seen a pro rider racing with mug guards, a frame pump, a saddlebag? No? Oh, I didn't think so, neither have I actually. Funnily enough, chances are pro riders wouldn't want these things on their bike. But even if they did, they wouldn't be allowed because you guessed it, the UCI or Fun Police have banned it. I mean, it's no surprise really. Additional fixtures are not allowed on the bikes within UCI races. That rules out all of those things I've just mentioned. 
But I do wonder if you could have everyone in the peloton using mud guards in a particularly wet race, maybe the peloton would be a safer place. Everyone might actually be able to see where they're going for once. However, for you and I, we can have as many bags as we like attached onto our bikes. Multiple pumps, multiple saddlebags, you name it, additional fixtures are all allowed, and in some cases, encouraged. Oh, another one for you actually, is pro riders are limited to only having their drink bottles on the down tube or the seat tubes of their bike. They're not allowed to have them on the handlebars, the stem, or tucked away behind the saddle, trying to make them as aero as possible. We, on the other hand, can have the drink bottles on our bikes anywhere we like. Nice and simple. Next up on our list is a bit of an obvious one, this, but pro riders are not allowed to use e-bikes or any other motors on their bikes, be that hidden or on display. Well, unless it's the UCI e-mounted bike world championships, and then I guess they'll allow it for that. But in the past, we have seen a couple of instances in road races and in cyclocross where this has been a bit of a problem. But surprise, surprise, the UCI have stepped in with a dedicated team of experts to help crack down on hidden motors in races. They go around to all the UCI events and are scanning the bikes with special electronic equipment trying to highlight any of those motors and batteries that might be hidden away in people's bikes. I actually had my own bike scanned at a UCI race once. Um, I did say to them if I had a hidden motor inside I would have hoped for a slightly better result but um, yeah they didn't find it so funny. However, for the rest of us, there's no such ruling around e-bikes. We can use e-bikes as much or as little as we like. Personally, I think e-bikes are a good thing. They allow people to ride further and faster than they otherwise would, and it's one of the largest growing sectors within cycling. Happy days. Next up on the list, saddles. You guessed it, the UCI have got plenty of rules around this. However, for you and I, we can use whatever saddle we like and we can have it in the position that we find most comfortable. Pro riders though, they're duty bound to follow the rules of the UCI. So the UCI state that a saddle can't be any longer than a certain length and it can't be any shorter than a certain length. Not only that, the UCI stipulate, particularly for time trials as such, that the nose of the saddle has to be at least five centimeters behind the line of where the bottom bracket sits. In addition to that, they also state that the angle the saddle sits at can't be any more than nine degrees from perfectly horizontal. Well, they are kind enough to allow a one degree margin of error, just for, just for safety, you know. It's nice of them, isn't it? The UCI also stipulate that you're not allowed to use grip tape on your saddle anymore. This is something we saw lots of time trials do a number of years ago. Most famously for this was Tony Martin, who always used to have grip tape on the nose of his saddle, trying to hold him in that extreme aerodynamic position. But whatever you do, don't do a Tony Martin and wear all the way through your skin suit. Oh, that sounds painful. The age-old debate rages on about lightweight versus aero, but in the weight department, the pros are limited to 6.8 kilograms. Any less than that, and the UCI police will be on to you with a hefty fine. It seems a bit of an old school rule, this. It's one that has been around for a number of years, since long before I was even born. So maybe it's time we saw it updated. I mean, the advancements in technology that we've seen surely can allow us to make bikes that are much lighter than that, yet still remain as safe as we require. No such stress for you or I though. We can ride whatever bikes we like. The lightest bikes known to humanity even. Sub four kilogram bike? Yes please, that'll do lovely. Right, on to my final bit of tech that you can have, but pro riders can't. Smartphones. I know, it seems a little bit crazy, this one, doesn't it? But pro riders are only allowed to use a team race radio. Any other form of electronic communication is strictly prohibited, and you guessed it, banned by the UCI. The only way they're allowed to communicate is with their team race radio, which allows them to speak to their team car only, or other riders within their team. If they're caught using any other form of electronic communication, you guessed it, it's a hefty fine or potentially disqualification from the race. No such worry for you and I though, we can take our smartphones out on our bikes, obviously using them hands-free, and we can use them to navigate our way around using maps, or even, in the worst case scenarios, we can call a, a taxi or get a lift home if our bike breaks or we have an unfortunate puncture and we don't have any spares. Life's simple for us. There you have it, the upgrades and tech that we can have, but pro riders can't. And if you think I've missed anything off of the list, well get it in the comments section down below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to GCN Tech and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release our latest videos. See you later.